All right, today I'm here with David Davis, one of the few people who I don't have bad blood with from the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it was forever ago. Yeah, I'm um, David Davis of Porous Palms. I'm on everywhere, Instagram, it's named my website, sorcerer, mystic, folk practitioner, artist, writer, etc. Speaking of artists, that's what we're here for. We're going to be talking about planetary magic for the creative and the creative professionals. Planetary magic in regards of helping your creative practice as in opportunities and also the actual creativity itself as far as your skills. First, can you just give us a simple rundown of what is planetary magic? Yeah, so... The way I define planetary magic is the uh, sort of the art of tapping into the different um, like currents of the different planets, specifically the seven traditional planets, um, which I like, you know, we'll go over later. But yeah, sort of like tapping into those energies, understanding that each of those planets have their own like virtues, their own qualities, their own sort of strengths, weaknesses, things that they're sort of just, you know good at um, and good at helping us do. Yeah, and just sort of understanding that, studying that, building your own relationship with the the spirits within those particular currents. Ultimately, what it comes down to is like building your own relationships and like developing your own sort of process and understanding of like what these planets and their energies can do for you, depending on what it is you're, you're trying to do. And within the context of this, like your creative endeavors, your, you know, creative business, you're an artist, et cetera. So like, how can you tap into these different qualities to help yourself creatively and professionally. I don't work with the planets as physical bodies, right? So I'm not an astrologer. So like nothing we talk about today is going to be like talking about transits and aspects and stuff like that. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm more so about engagement with the currents. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain what that means like in a minute. Like what does it mean to tap into the current of a specific planetary energy? So like not working with the sun per se like as a physical being so you're not necessarily paying attention to like oh what sign is the sun in or what is it doing with the other planets but more so like what does it look like to immerse yourself in that sort of energetic body mm -hmm. right to sort of to, to sort of become a part of that and to sort of tap into the different energies and that those energies include plant spirits um deities if you work with deities um and just like other you know saints angels etc like everything in my opinion can be viewed through a planetary lens pretty much any deity if you if you gave me or anyone else enough information about like a specific plant or deity for example uh, we would be able to sort of say like oh that sounds like a very like saturnian spirit yeah. that sounds like a very solar like a spirit Mars that sounds thing. like a water yeah like yeah. and so even though that spirit in their respective tradition and their their culture yeah. isn't necessarily associated with that planet and I, I i respect that like i'm not trying to let me plug my computer in i'm not trying to like flatten these um cultures and try to like impose um things onto them but just for the sake of your personal practice when it comes to you making sense of things i think like the planetary lens helps put stuff into healthy boxes obviously you can Definitely. you can get bogged down with too much specificity and sort of um to the point where you're limiting yourself unnecessarily but i think a healthy limitation a healthy system is definitely a good thing every now and again yeah i think that's a good point like you say a good box a healthy box and it's also sounding like you going back to the point of everything is connected when we was talking about the spirits that a creator mm -hmm. can work with, we even made a point of this spirit from this lore has the same properties as this spirit from this other pantheon. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because, like, I acknowledge that the that a lot of the spirits are different. I'm not a big fan of like the idea that like they're all the same, right? Like mm -hmm. that, like I don't think Venus is Aphrodite, is Oshun, mm -hmm. is Ishtar. But I, I acknowledge that they're all separate beings from their own cultures and backgrounds. And there there are little nuances to them that make them a bit different. Mm -hmm. But going back to that sort of current or that body, I see it as sort of like each planet existing, like let's say like a body of water, like the yeah. way I like to visualize it in ritual, right? Like if I'm if I'm stepping into the martial currents, which I do quite often, that's like one of the planets I work with the most. I envision myself sort of like standing at the shore of this body, 
right? This liquid body of a whatever fluid, you know, in the case of Mars, it'll be like blood, right? So I'm standing in this, like in front of this expanse of blood and I'm either going into it to engage with the spirits inside of that, or I'm calling them out of it, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm acknowledging that like, I'm standing at the martial body and I'm calling on Mars who lives in this body, right? I'm calling on Aries who lives in this body. I'm calling on Tyr, I'm calling on et cetera. Yeah, so it's like they all live in the same place. It's like they all live in like the same apartment complex, but yeah. like they're still, they have their own units, yeah. right? And they're all decorated differently Definitely. and they speak their own languages and stuff like that. You could kind of make it a, a, a day to sort of visit all of them. I'm familiar with like chaos magic, but I'm, I am not a chaos magician. I'm definitely not like well versed enough in it to like mm -hmm. speak on it um but from like what i've uh seen read heard that's not my approach like i i'm more of a traditionalist in more ways than not mm -hmm. um there are definitely a lot of ways like you said where i'm like i i'm going to be an ancestor one day right and so like just like our an our ancestors adjusted to their time and to their needs and you know desires like i'm allowed to do that too if these are living traditions these are supposed to be living traditions and they're supposed to evolve over time and so like with respect to the foundations that have been laid i think it is still important to like come to your own conclusions and sort of like develop your own gnosis as a creative who's also a practitioner you know what will be plan is that will help the creative if they're trying to get business opportunities creative opportunities expand their creative work get a little bit more drive to make whatever they make you know stuff like that so what will be the planets you will say that help with that i would say all of them can if we're looking at this um space that we're living in as as a body right and eat, just like we have a body and all of our organs play a specific role in keeping us alive, right? And sort of whether we, you know, are aware of them or not or what they're doing, um, I, I view the planets the same way, right? Like they all can do something. Um, if, if sort of framed correctly, if approached correctly, they all can do something to sort of help the creative process, both from a, uh, a creative perspective Point of view as well as like a professional one um a business one first of all i think it's important to frame like which planets i'm talking about so i've said i've mentioned like the traditional planets or the classical planets a lot these are the planets that have been um they were identified i believe like by the babylonians uh, initially um around like the second millennium like bc so like this is these like an old understanding of it um seven of them some modern sources refer to them as like the five planets and the two luminaries, which does make more sense considering the fact that like the sun and the moon are not technically planets, mm -hmm. but they're included in that list. But yeah, like the order that it's been sort of arranged in based on like the, the slowest to the fastest moving planets from Earth's perspective, it's uh, Saturn. I have like notes off to the side. So like Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the sun, Venus, Mercury, and the moon. Right. So there's no Pluto here in my practice. There's no Uranus. There's no Neptune. Um, and I think those are the only ones that are missing. If we were to like go based off of like a more modern astrological approach. And then, of course, you have like the planetary days, which are out of that order. But, you know, Monday being the moon, Tuesday being Mars, Wednesday being Mercury, Thursday, Jupiter, Friday, Venus, Saturday, Saturn, Sunday, the sun. So those are the planets I'm referring to. And those are the ones I'll be sort of talking about. And I think they all can contribute something to this process, starting off with like Monday and the moon, um, you know, different texts uh, associate the moon or connect the moon with the practice of like image magic. Most people are familiar with sigils, right, which is its own art form um, and other like uh, sort of um, connected art forms or similar art forms but image magic is a bit different because like if you read a text like the picatrix there are some a few like little um like visual charms or talismans in there but generally speaking like when it comes to invoking those planets and their energies you're not going to get a sigil you're going to get an image that you're supposed to like draw right so it'll be like to work with saturn right draw up i'm just making this up i don't have like the text in front of me but like draw an image of like a man you know riding a 
dragon wearing a crown in this shape and he's holding a sword in his left hand and right so it's not a it's not a sigil it's not what we're used to when thinking about like the goetia mm -hmm. right where it's like each spirit has you know this thing that's already been drawn out for us yeah so like the moon being associated with image magic i think like mondays would be a really good time a really good day especially if it's like within like an hour of mercury the planet of like communication and also as it's associated with image magic a bit as well vision boards right mood boards like quite literally i've been wanting to do this for a little while like drawing yourself in your most ideal creative and professional state whatever medium you engage with actually taking the time to like create an image of yourself in that ideal state on a monday that would be like a really interesting day a really like auspicious day because if we're thinking about images as the things that hold intention right like they hold visually what we want out of a situation or out of a, out of a space or out of our lives or from those spirits you're an artist and you're like drawing yourself like in a gallery mm -hmm. right surrounded by your artwork um and you're drawing like the little red dots right and so like you're you're you know to indicate that like oh it's been sold right like so you're you're yeah. creating that that image of yourself so that you can invoke that outcome the moon also being associated with like the subconscious the dream world like that's just a really good day to like daydream um get those really like abstract ideas out not in a super concrete way like the moon monday isn't necessarily a day to like put things in like a solid form i would say that's more of like a saturday thing mm -hmm. um maybe even like a Wednesday thing, abstraction, right? Like just, just stream of consciousness, right? If you're a writer, right? Like stream of consciousness, um, not really thinking about it all too much, automatic writing, right? Just allowing those thoughts, the muses to, to guide your hand, right? Um, without you getting too bogged down with logic yeah. and reason and grammar and sentence structure and stuff like that. Um, which can be very difficult depending on like your chart. I'm like, I, like I said, I'm not an astrologer, but like that can be difficult. Like if you're more of like a, Virgo. If, you're, if you're a very particular per, yeah, like my Mercury is in Virgo, my rising is in Virgo. And so like stream of consciousness is a pain for me. You know, magic ultimately is about stepping out of your comfort zone a lot of times and sort of facing those fears and facing those discomforts. Then you have what Tuesday being Mars, being related to Mars um like force like mars is a warrior spirit um a warrior current and so think about like force um a really good day to do like blockbuster work like you feel like there's stuff in your way externally internally that's a really good day to like break through that um a really good day to like get physical um mars is very much like of the blood of the body of the flesh um and so like just really get and this is going to sound a bit like abstract so like whatever this means to you go with that like just getting really in your body right mm -hmm. that could look like you know you hear about people like needing to take a walk in order to sort of like allow an idea to sort of take form right mm -hmm. or people need to like go to the gym or go for a run or have sex or whatever like into something in order for them to sort of like help them sort of clear their head yeah. um any sort of like physical action that gets the blood flowing is very martial in nature depending on your art form mars can also be a good day to or tuesday can be a good day to like just do that work right like if you're like a metal smither right like you're working with heat you're working with sort of like rough materials it's a damn good day to participate in those kinds of activities but yeah, just like being a bit like ag being aggressive, yeah. right? Like, you know, taking up space, which again is also a very solar um, quality as well. But like being aggressive, taking up space, demanding shit of things and people and places and stuff like conviction. Yeah, conviction, um, locomotion, movement, going out and doing the thing, right? Like go, go and take that drive to that space to that gallery to that studio or whatever that's maybe like an hour away mm -hmm. right like that you wouldn't you're like oh that's too far but like to go do it right mm -hmm. and same thing with like when, like go do that like get in motion go out into the world and do stuff to mars is not a, a um a very contemplative um energy it's very like action oriented Wednesday and I'll get into like planetary hours as well like how to blend the days with the hours and sort of just sort of like uh, add more nuance to it mm -hmm. but like Wednesday really good for communication right like get the read those emails 
get those, write those emails, right? Um, get that landing page set up, right? Get those product descriptions written. Divination from a practitioner's perspective is also, Wednesday is also a really good day for that. Like Mercury rules the sciences of divination. So whether that's tarot or bone throwing scrying, whatever it is that you do, um, taking the time on a Wednesday to just like sit down and figure out like, okay, like what's what's good for the rest of the week? right? What do I need to do in order for this to happen or blah, blah, blah. Um, and pull those cards, throw those bones or those dice or, you know, whatever it is that you do. Writing those grant proposals. Yeah. Anything writing, speaking, recording the podcast, right? On a Wednesday, right. like if you have like doing that on a Wednesday, right? Like just sort of sending that out into the world. Thursdays can be a bit daunting depending on how you approach it, you know, being related to Jupiter. Yeah, and then like Thursday related to Jupiter, the the greater the greater benefic. So it's like generally speaking, like a very like positive planet, um, a positive like planetary influence. Legal matters, it's like a good thing. It's similar in my experience, in my limited experience, because I don't really work with Jupiter that much. Um, I work with the sun more, but like in my limited experience, Jupiter has like a similar signature to the sun. What's going with my video? Um, a similar signature yeah, you to look like a death grips. Video. Yeah, <laughs> the Jupiter has a very similar energy signature to the Sun in the sense that it's like very regal, right? It's like royal. It takes up a lot of space. Like Jupiter is related to um, Zeus, right? So like this idea of like the king of the gods, right? Like they're at the top of the top. If you were to approach it from an astrological perspective, like right now, I believe Jupiter is in Pisces. A friend of mine was talking about how it's like a really good time to lean into impracticality right so like normally when it comes to magic um and also just like the thing that we do like it's best to be a bit practical right mm -hmm. um you don't want to sort of bite off more than you can chew or sort of just you know shoot outside of your your league but like jupiter because of how uh, because of its um capacity for expansion right and sort of like moving into other spaces um it can be a very good time to just like lean into like delusion, mm -hmm. right? So like we were talking about like Mercury, write those grant proposals. Well, like Jupiter can be a good time to like send in um, a Thursday. It can be like a really good time to just like send in um, the grant proposal for that grant that you're technically probably not super qualified for, <laughs> yeah, right? Or it's it maybe like a bit, yeah, exactly. Like it's Jupiter is very much about like optimism. And so it's like apply for those things that probably wouldn't make the most sense for you to apply for or um just seem are just they're they're larger than anything you've ever done so like maybe you've only ever applied for like mini grants right you've gotten like you know like a thousand dollars at a time like mm -hmm. apply for that you know Crazy. ten thousand dollar grant you know what i'm saying <laughs> like get that like big one reach out to that like really prestigious gallery if that kind of stuff is important to you um if like prestige is something that's important to you, like reach out to that really prestigious gallery with your work and be like, or just show up, right? D Thursday during like an hour of Mars, right? <laughs> just like mm -hmm. show up, like here's my work. And I know that's very like Hollywood, very like rom-com, like I'm here. And the next thing you know, like they're a world famous artist, but like try just like experiment something with that. Something outside of your comfort zone. Exactly, yeah. Then you have Fridays related to Venus, related to, you know, Venus stereotypically, and also accurately associated with like, you know, like love, sex, sensuality, stuff like that. Um, also abundance, right? Think about like the Empress card and the tarot, like the image of the person like reclined in this lush field, right? Like they're surrounded by everything they could ever want, everything they could ever need. They're comfortable. Um, so yeah, like abundance, sort of like drawing money, right? Like Venus is very good for like bringing in money. Also relationship, like networking, right? So think about like either like Mer uh, Wednesday during an hour of Venus or flip it like, you know, a Friday during an hour of Mercury, a really good time to like go to that event. And it makes sense because like a lot of like art exhibitions and stuff like are on Fridays, taking the time to like go into the spaces and like talking to people. It's funny because Venus being like the Roman name or the Roman equivalent of Aphrodite, the ancient Greeks, I remember reading this somewhere, so I, I can't think of where, so don't quote me on this, but it sounds right. The ancient Greeks, they, you know, they had Aphrodite be, you know, you know, love, sex, etc. Also the goddess of the marketplace, 
mm. right? Because they understood that all good business is rooted in good relationships. And when commerce. you think about exactly commerce, and so when you think about the act of like marketing yourself, the act of selling something, it is a seduction, right? Like it's a it's a it's a, a seduction on multiple levels. Um, you you get people to see the thing, whatever it is. You kind of want to entice them, mm -hmm. right? You kind of want to bring them in. Um, aesthetics is very important to Venus. Um, aesthetics as they relate to values is also very important to Venus. Aesthetics don't ex exist in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. The way we present ourselves and the, the kinds of images and colors and textures and sounds, et cetera, that we put out into the world, they all they are all, or they should be a reflection of the kind of person we are and the kinds of communities we wanna exist in like beautify yourself right mm -hmm. you go out into these spaces you know I, i'm not too big on i'm not big on respectability politics and so like i'm not going to tell someone the only way you're like worth anything is if you dress up i don't right. believe that at all but if we're approaching networking from like a venusian perspective put on your nice clothes right put yeah. on the, the nicest fabrics you have wear that put on that cologne or that perfume like put on those nice shoes show up and just show up and be pretty right like, yeah, like just what show up makes and, you feel good yeah right? yeah and and sort of allow that to sort of attract the people that you want to attract so you like networking but from a very aesthetically um focused perspective then you have like saturday which is related to saturn the lord of you know time right saturn is sort of like a in the world of astrology and planetary magic it's kind of like a big scary figure to a lot of people people talk about like their saturn return a lot and like mm -hmm. oh the, you know it's going to be a really trying time and they're not wrong but there is some value in that saturnian element Definitely. um that current you think about like discipline structure right there's a reason why like other than capitalism and the fact that saturday is the first day of the weekend um there is i would argue sort of like a a, a, a metaphysical reason behind like why people um at least in my experience like black families like clean their homes on saturday mm -hmm. that's the day to like you know like get serious about stuff right you know organize throw stuff out bring new stuff in make sure everything is sort of in its proper place bringing that into like a business point of view like organization i just went through my google drive the other day and like deleted a bunch of stuff reorganized a bunch of folders i didn't do this during like a mercurial hour but like you could if you wanted to time it get those like standardized responses in order right like if you manually um like send out emails to like clients customers they sign up for a class they buy something whatever like mm -hmm. take the time to write stuff out that you can just like copy and paste yeah like automation um structure foundations that's a good point because it's the little stuff that counts like you said mm -hmm. with the just clearing out your google drive like that stuff literally counts cleaning out your gmail so you can actually yeah. get the email from whatever gallery or whatever client I know with me, I almost missed a grant a couple of years ago just because my Gmail was so full. Mm. So it's, it's little stuff like that. So I, that's a great point. Saturn is very much about those hard lessons, right? So like if you would have missed that grant, that would have been Saturn being like, what are we going to do next time? What do we learn from this? Yeah. Because Saturn is such a big planet, right? Like traditionally speaking, it's referred to as the, the greater malefic in the context of magic, like malefic being like, destructive or even evil right so it's it was in, in sort of medieval and renaissance magic saturn was seen as like the big bad guy right mm -hmm. with mars being the the smaller bad guy the sidekick if you will it's very much like that stern paternal energy um old you know you see saturn is like the reaper or like the old man right it, it can be a scary current to like engage with like leaning more into like the magical side of things because it is so or it can be so like that mm -hmm. if you're willing to sort of um, to confront those challenges then it's 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 rewarding also like saturn being very much like like a subterranean current you think about like the the plants that are associated with saturn right like root vegetables right things that are hardy and that grow underground so like it's a really good time to sort of like get to the root of things right like so we talked about venus with your values right um and how that influences your aesthetics but like how do your values influence the way your business runs mm -hmm. right like again going back to like organization and structure and foundation like getting to the root of like 
what are your influences? Is it time to reevaluate your influences, right? Like, what do they say about you? What do they say about the kind of work that you do, the kind of work that you want to do? Saturn is a, is a very crucial, um, because it is such a big energy, same with Jupiter, it is, it is a very crucial, like, planet to tap into. And then you have, finally, um, I don't know how long I've been rambling for, but the sun. No, <laughs> talking that um, <laughs> The sun the sort of second most planet I work with. Um, I'm a Leo and Leo sun and moon. And so like the sun is like very important to me, both in my chart, but also like magically speaking. The sun, and I'm actually writing a lecture about the sun for like this thing in August, uh, the Salem Witchcraft and Folklore Festival, the benefic and malefic aspects of solar magic. The sun takes up a lot of space. The sun and the moon are the only two things that we sort of experience tangible effects of if that makes any sense right mm -hmm. like the moon controls the tides and you know there's the stuff about like oh it's a full moon like it makes people like do weird shit right like it's yeah. it's that Our kind period. of thing right yeah like the sort of like the lunar cycle and stuff like that so yeah like you think about the fact that the sun takes up a lot of space and the sun is probably my f the venus and the sun are probably my two favorite energies to tap into when going into a space to try to like sell something mm -hmm. right like i've been i do readings in a local shop and like when i'm going in i either sort of go venusian or solar or a mixture of both when it comes to like the colors that i'm wearing the the fragrances that i wear the charms and stuff that i carry with me because they are you know we spoke about how venus is very much rooted in like aesthetics and so like beauty people being drawn to beautiful things and then the sun it takes up so much space. It's radiant. It can oftentimes be overpower overpoweringly radiant. And then there's also just like the, the fact that the sun has a pull to it, right? Like we are quite literally circulating around it mm -hmm. um, because of how large it is. And it's it sort of that gravitational pull is something that can't be escaped easily. Um, and so when you walk into that space and you're wearing your gold jewelry and your your fabrics and stuff like that like people can't help but to be drawn to you you're wearing those like sweet citrusy spiced you know fragrances like people are like what's that smell and it's like it's me since you're over here let's talk about this artwork on yeah. the wall behind me. you know what i'm saying it's like it's very it's that the venus oil it's from like, motown witch <laughs> yes yeah it's like it's it's very like specific in that way like i'll wear like my solar oil i've been doing some like work with the queen of sheba which i approach as a solar spirit and like again like this this idea of networking going back to networking and this idea that like you're so renowned that people are just going to want to they're drawn to you in the way that the, that makita the queen of sheba was drawn to king solomon right she she had heard of his wisdom and all of who solomon also being generally approached as a solar spirit um you know she had heard of his wisdom his feats and and how his his kingdom and she was like i want to go see that guy right like that that seems like a really from from ruler to ruler right like monarch to monarch that seems like a really good person to be in the presence of and the sun can that solar current and working with the spirits within that current facilitate that that uh, reaction in people very uplifting very inspiring inspiring and i'm not necessarily getting into at least not yet like the malefic properties of the sun because those can also be helpful um and like a business perspective like especially in the realm of like domination there might be some unjust power structures going on hint hint in the art world mm -hmm. there are a lot of unjust power structures going on mm -hmm. the malefic side of the sun sort of being really good for like tearing that down and challenging that yeah um, i think it of it as carving out your own lane it's funny you, you use the word carving because like mars it being associated with like weapons but also surgery right mm -hmm. like mars was associated with like any kind of um in the renaissance and the medieval period was also was associated with any kind of surgery that inquired required like invasive cutting you think about mars being like associated with weapons you have blades that translates very easy to like a scalpel an or anything knife. an exacto knife <laughs> like anything anything that can sort of like get into those those things and sort of cut things away whereas the sun isn't as exact in my experience um because you think about how the, the the way sunlight behaves it encompasses entire areas, mm -hmm. right? Simultaneously, there is an entire side of the planet at any given time that is touched by sunlight. Mars does not have that same effect. 
you know? And so that's why I'm talking about like with, with the solar energy, like taking up space, right? Self-confidence, sometimes bordering on arrogance, right? But like, so, right? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so what if you're a bit like um, cocky? You know what I'm saying? Like there's someone out there in that space, whether it's a studio or a, a, an art gallery or wherever, there's someone in that space who's drawn to that cockiness, Yeah. right? There are even some sort of art forms and some sort of genres. Like you think about like the, like the um, like hip hop culture, how like cockiness is celebrated. But I feel like that translates well when you go out into the world. Of course, you can overdo it and you can overdo all of these energies. Like, I'm the sun. I take up space. People are drawn to me. People are going to be drawn to the fact that I feel this way about myself. Right. I see my it's work in such a great others. light. Exactly. It's uplifting. It's inspiring. And it makes people want to have, it makes people want to connect with you. It makes people want to have your, it makes people want to hear your voice. It makes them want to see you. It makes them want to have your work in their space. It makes them want to read whatever it is you, you've you written. Because they're like, this, this is coming from someone who is like very sure about themselves. And um, we, we live in like a culture of like, of niceness which i do not like um i don't consider myself to be a nice person i have no desire to be nice but it, it, we live in a culture of niceness and a part of that niceness is like false humility mm. yeah those are the the seven and just sort of a quick rundown of how they can be tapped into right so how long have you been a practitioner i know going back to the studio thing like it was, this is like 2019, I believe. I had saw a sigil on your door, and I was like, I just automatically knew. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be cool with this person. <laughs> so, <laughs> how long have you been into the arts? You would say? I would say like around a decade, um, like on and off. There was like a year long period where I wasn't practicing at all, like a year to a year and a half. But like, yeah, like outside of that, like around a decade of just like reading studying and then obviously also like practicing wanting to get sort of like that more hands-on approach so are there any books you would recommend to somebody there are two that i work out of most often um i'm gonna start with the one that i work out of least often um the key of solomon which like most a lot of people are familiar with and it, it goes through the, the the different virtues of the planets the planetary days and hours the different colors associated with the planets what i realized that i didn't get into um previously so we could like touch on like color magic as it relates to the different planets as well and how that can sort of help you in your your creative journey and your professional journey and then there's the the picatrix which isn't as known as the Key of Solomon, like it hasn't been in English for as long. I think the first English translation was like early 2000s. Texts, um, they're magical texts. And so like, you're gonna have to read them, sort of come to your own conclusions. You're gonna get like the different, um, the things that the different planetary energies are good for, right? So you're gonna see that like Jupiter is good for like legal stuff you're going to see that venus is good for like attraction etc if we're talking about bringing these like bringing these planets down to earth right like how can we engage with them in our day-to-day -day life these texts uh, especially the picatrix can be a bit complex right mm -hmm. it can actually be a lot of like get this very obscure and then also like there's the fact that like in a lot of these grimoires these older ones it, you know, there's this this idea that like the, these texts were written in intentionally obscure ways to sort of like deter the, the common folk, yeah. right? So you're going to read these texts and it's going to be like this. To make an, an incense, a, suffum a suffumigation for Saturn, get like a crow's heart and a pig and it's like, well, wait, like, where do I Real even get that? Alistair like, Crowley how do I? Like. <laughs> yeah, like it's very much like that. And so it's it's a lot of like sifting through the very the complicated information sort of being able to draw out the very practical stuff mm -hmm. if that makes any sense um so focusing on color smell take the senses right focusing on how can you make these planetary um invocations very in a, a sensory a multi-sensory experience both for yourself and for the people who you're sort of acting upon magically so again that goes back to like 
wearing certain colors on certain days or in certain spaces, wearing certain fragrances, certain types of jewelry. You know, if, if you're in charge of, like, if it's your show and you're in charge of the music, right? Like, what kind of energy do you want to call into that space, mm-hmm. right? If it's something, if you're, if you want to go for something more Venusian, um, like, uh, harmonious stringed instruments like vo- like very um, like choral stuff right um, whereas like something like Mercury might be more like you know like Aphex Twin right like IDM like very much like that and you know um, uh, Mars could be very cacophonous very like a lot of drumming and sort of you know a lot of noise right um, and so creating like a multi-sensory experience and being able to sort of glean that information, because ultimately that's what folk magic is about. Looking at the sort of information that we've been given from these different institutions and these different authorities and making them work for us in our day-to-day lives. You know, these grimoires were written by wealthy people with a lot of time on their hands for wealthy people with a lot of time on their hands, right? Hence why you're gonna see in certain texts like, this very necessary material, you need like a lion skin belt and a a diamond or whatever, like, where am I going to get that? And Mm. I work at Starbucks Mm. or I work, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) It's like, but how do I take that and make it make sense for me and my budget um, and the space that I have and the the kind of work that I want to do? So those are the big two for me. That kind of just relates to the whole hoodoo thing, just the whole essence of that practice of working with what you got. Yep, absolutely. That that's a big thing for me. If you have the means um, and the space to sort of be a bit more extra, I would say go for it. And if that's something that's important to you, I would say go for it. Again, like there are some times where it's like, I just need to do something quick yeah. or I don't have access to those things. And so it's like, it's it goes back to the relationships. Like what relationship do you have with those those spirits, the spirits within those respective planetary currents? Will they show up for you, mm. right? Even if you don't have all the accoutrement yeah, it's like I don't got time to write these big ass symbols on the floor in a black robe. Cows. Right. I have a sharpie and I have a, <laughs> a, a you know what I'm saying I have a piece of computer paper. You know what I'm saying? I can, you know, deal with that and that's just as fine. Yeah. And there's value in in the the the, the big stuff. And I like to try to blend it as much as possible. If I'm making an oil that I'm gonna wear when I go to do readings or when Mm. I sit down and make my work, like I'll, I'll incorporate some ceremony into it for sure. But like, yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not a ceremonial magician. I come from that background academically speaking in the sense that like those were the, the, these grimoires were the first like magical texts that I really started to read. So you just spoke on uh, color and how they relate to the planet. So Mm -hmm. could you uh, talk a bit more about that and, you know, would that go into the planetary magic and helping the creative? If we're talking about like the act of creation, incorporating like different colors into your pieces, right? Like if you want them to have a certain effect on people, right? If you want to sort of create a Venusian piece, you have like your greens, your coppers, certain people with it like pink, even like depending on like who you ask and like the the, the the sort of lens that they view Venus through, get that really rich emerald green paint, um, get that like metallic, you can get like really inexpensive like metallic paints, the metallic like Sharpies and shit mm-hmm. like that, like get that copper and like really channel that, right? Burn your vanilla incense, which you can just get from like Rite Aid. You obviously have like the moon being associated with like white, silver, blue like being associated like the moon being associated with water so like shades of blue as well um for like intuition that like vision board stuff like what you would wear to certain places same thing applies right so like for example like if i'm going to do readings i'm going to make it a point to wear like green and gold so that i can embody that venusian and solar presence um yeah so that like I, I'm I'm sort of that those spirits are attracted to me and they'll want to work with me to sort of get the, the sort of goal, uh, sort of help me reach the goals that I'm asking them to help me reach. The color in magic in general is, is I would argue, is very important. Yeah. The spirits that we work with are not devoid of like aesthetic preferences. They like certain smells. They like mm-hmm. certain colors. They like certain shapes, textures, um, spaces. 
it's a part of that immersion, right? I mentioned earlier how I don't how I don't work with the planets as physical bodies as much as I work with them as sort of currents. Like I sort of I so if I'm immersing myself in a specific space, I want to smell like that space. I want mm -hmm. to look like it. I want to sound like it. I want to taste like it. I want to you know embody, um, that. embody that as much as possible. And so if I'm feeling a bit bold and I want to like feel a bit more martial, right? Like, or sort of embody that a bit more. A lot of red, a lot of sharp angles. And also just like the way you carry yourself in a particular space. You think about like how the way you move, the way you speak, right? How those can sort of uh, lend themselves to different uh, like planetary invocations and then and, and just, you know, how those energies show up in a space. Like color, like, uh, you know, also sense, sound, movements, all of those things can really help you embody those planetary qualities, but also it can sort of impress upon others, right? The kinds of energies that you're sort of invoking, if that makes any sense. Going back to that like folk magic approach to things, like this is a magic that's more or less for everyone. When you think about the different cultures that folk magic, folk magic exists within and has always existed within, Yes, you had your specialists, you had your conjurers, your cunning people, your witches, right? Um, the people who, like, they dedicated their life to it, and they, they knew all of that esoteric stuff, right? But everyone knew a little bit of something. It, it, it's about finding ways to tap into that, to tap into magic without you necessarily need, like you said, needing to like, you know, know the secret names of whatever and mm. what sigil is for this and blah, blah, blah. Like you can kind of, you can just wear green. If you want to bring in money, wear green. Anyone can do that. Make this meeting at this, at this hour, you know, yep. this hour represents this. So yeah. It's, it's stuff that everyone can do regardless of your uh, like magical experience. Um, and just whatever, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable doing, you can just, you can do this work. Another thing with practicing, a big thing that comes up is, oh, I don't, I don't have the space. You know, I don't have the space to make this altar, and you know, my parents are going to move this and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, this definitely seems like something that's like doesn't take too much. Again, like if we're if we're talking about clothing and the way you carry yourself, like that's not something that someone can take from you, right? Or move, or, or they can disapprove of it, but like generally speaking there's not much that can be done about it um, if they disprove of it and so it's like no one can stop you from wearing a certain color yeah right or speaking a certain way exactly and so it's it's like this approach to magic in general something that's very embodied something that's very um practical there is a time and a place in my life for ceremony and for sort of you know grand gestures of things but yeah for the most part my right my day-to-day -day practice is like what am i eating when i go to the coffee shop in the morning and get my rose latte right roses being associated with venus or if i'm about to go in and do readings go to that same coffee shop and get like a cinnamon latte mm. cinnamon being associated with like prosperity and stuff like that like i'm i'm, I'm consuming that it's, it's about the intention and the more right. you do the work the properties yeah the more you do this work the more you will inevitably find ways to incorporate these energies into your life. Like I said, like the latte or the color that you wear or the way that you carry yourself, right? Like these spirits, these these currents will reveal more ways for you to like embody them. Because I think they enjoy it, right? I think they enjoy seeing themselves in the world, functioning, spirits not just at an ways. altar. Yeah, 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 ex absolutely. Not Even just on an altar. The... And they want they want to exist with you and inside of you and around you, in my experience. Like, it's, it's all about the practicality. It's all about just doing stuff that makes sense for you and your the, the, the kind of life you live, the kind of life you want to live, the kind of person you are, the kind of person you want to be. Take stock of all of that and find ways to incorporate these principles into your life and into your practice with those understandings in mind. Definitely a lot of valuable information. So can you tell the people um, about your website and what you offer and the, the magical services you offer? Yeah, for sure. So there's, um, it's porouspalms.com, P-O-R-O-U-S-P-A-L-M-S.com. I teach classes. I 
this will be probably be coming out after June 10th, but like tomorrow, as of recording this, like I have a an in-person class about planetary magic, but I'll also be offering that online within like the next month or so. So if this was interesting to you, you'll be able to like learn about it in a more formalized like session for like one-on-one -on -one work. Like if you just have like a specific question, I offer consultations um, on my website that can be booked on my website. And so you just like come with a question or questions or a topic starting off at an hour, but you know, however long you need beyond that. Um, divination, so like tarot readings, cardamancy, extending from like the, the consultation work. I do some ritual work on a selective basis um, for people. Um, the one like consistent ritual that I offer is like a martial blockbuster service where I, you know, after a consultation, we kind of find out what those blockages are in your life and we sort of barrel through those via a martial ritual, very fiery, very locomotive. I have an apothecary, some working on some stuff for later this year as well as like middle of next year. It's like magical items, oils, incense, powders, etc. Let me tell y'all, his oils is the truth. Protection oil and that incense blend. Incense blend always getting used on my altar for sure. And that thank you, thank you gave me a reading a couple years ago, like a yearly forecast reading, like on point. I'm glad. Thank you. I'm trying to tap into that solar not being shy about praise. <laughs> no. Do you have a Instagram, um, Patreon, things like that? Yeah, I have an Instagram. Uh, Instagram, everything is at Porous Palms. So, like, my Instagram is at Porous Palms, and then Patreon, patreon.com slash Porous Palms. Um, I'm working on some stuff, like a, like a lot of stuff to kind of push out to my Patreon all at once, um, or, like, sort of spread out, but, like, over the course of, like, a few months. There are also some, like, discounts through my Patreon, so you can get, like, monthly readings at a discounted rate, as opposed to, like, booking them one at a time through my website. So on that note, it's Firstborn Art. We appreciate the engagement. We hope y'all found this video of value and we'll catch y'all on the next one.